The Frankfurt School, um, since the beginning, it was born in 1923. And um, that was thanks to a donation by uh, Felix Weil, who was the son of a businessman uh, who made a fortune in Argentina. And I think... I think it's important to um, mention this uh, beginning of the school because uh, the will of Felix Weil was to uh, promote Marxist studies in Germany. And so that's how it came about uh, the Institute for, for, uh, of Social Research, the Institute for Social Forschung, uh, which uh, had a connected chair at uh, Goethe University in Frankfurt. Well, then, uh, you know, the school in 1933 uh, had to be uh, relocated temporarily in the U.S. at Columbia University, uh, New York, uh, because of the Nazis' uh, takeover. And um, some of the leading figures um, of the uh, early times were obviously Marx uh, Horkheimer. I'm sure we will um, talk about him uh, more, um, but also Theodore Adorno, uh, Walter Benjamin, uh, Pollock, uh, Marcuse, uh, from, and uh, later, um, starting from um, what we might call the second generation, uh, Jürgen Habermas, and then many more in the third generation, and uh, and so on. And, um, uh, besides, uh, you know, this general uh, uh, interest in Marxist uh, Marx uh, uh, philosophy, um, more specifically, uh, the notions of uh, commodification, reification, fetishization, those were the notions, the social science aspects connected to Marx philosophy were mostly um, the interesting uh, topic for uh, those scholars that wanted to uh, develop critical thinking within the German uh, tradition. So um, some of the elements connected with that were uh, the so-called pathologies of society, the critique of capitalism, psychoanalysis of the masses, and the notion of authoritarian uh, power, which uh, unfortunately it was... Uh, very uh, a reality at that time. And unfortunately, I think also in our time is becoming. So that's, I think, that uh, I think are some of the elements that uh, capture the initial phase of, uh, or the premises uh, of, uh, under which the um, Franco uh, school uh, was born. See, very interesting. And you mentioned that at first when the school was created, they really wanted to focus on studying Marx. So we'll come back to that perhaps later. I don't want to jump too far ahead. And so let's still stay there. So you mentioned that there are generations. So perhaps I'm just combining the next, the second and third question. Maybe perhaps give a, discuss a little bit more the different generations, perhaps what distinguishes them. And if you want, you can already start telling us which thinkers were associated with which generation and if you want to highlight some of their ideas if not we can break it down into two questions yeah yeah well um let's say i think there is a uh, there are some variations in which um the generations in the frankfurt school are described i give you my version or what mm -hmm. i prefer uh, in terms of uh uh, describing the generations of the Frankfurt School, the classification which I propose has some advantages, but also uh, perhaps some uh, counterintuitive uh, results that I will mention to you. Well, but basically the idea that in, within uh, the third generation, you have a very um, broad um, frame of uh, mm. ages that are put together as the students of Jürgen Habermas, basically. But let's go um, in order. <laughs> well, the uh -huh. first uh, director of the um, uh, Institute for Social Research was uh, Karl uh, Grunberg. And, um, and I think this is important uh, to remember. He was the director, he was a Nostrand Marxist uh, scholar who directed the Institute for Social uh, Research from 1923, the beginning until 1930. And uh, he created 
uh, in a, um, the so-called uh, Grunberg Archive, a historical archive on labor movement. So was very specific uh, interest uh, at the beginning on labor movement. And uh, in 1930, and, and that was the towering figure as a directorship of, uh, of the um, uh, Institute of Social Research, uh, Max Horkheimer uh, took the place of uh, Grunberg. And um, he continued under uh, so, sort of Marxist in inspiration, but I think uh, Horker uh, succeeded uh, uh, Grunberg and uh, became the new director of, of the Institute for Social mm -hmm. Research. And uh, Max Horkheimer had uh, the great merits, uh, not only of uh, giving a framework of the new methodolo methodology that the um, Frankfurt sc School uh, um, was supposed to, to adopt uh, in uh, in relation to uh, traditional uh, philosophical uh, theories, and I hope we will have more time to be to specify uh, these uh, these points uh, that Horkheimer introduced, but um, also to give a more interdisciplinary um, shape to uh, the the school itself and to the combination of philosophy and the social uh, sciences. Then, um, speaking about the uh, generation, uh, certainly, uh, I would I would uh, consider three generations, all in all. I mean, what we have uh, until now, uh, and then there is the fourth, of course, which is uh, upcoming and uh, will materialize more in the next years. The first generation is, you know, the, the founders, the founding fathers, Max Horkheimer, but also all the ideological um, work that has been uh, conducted in terms of defining the method, the topics, and uh, Theodore Adorno, uh, Marcuse, of course, uh, Benjamin, who was, um, you know, a special figure uh, that I, I, I really uh, like as a, um, as a philosopher, but also the way in which he related to the school, I think it's also very peculiar. Um, but certainly he influenced uh, very much uh, Adorno, certainly, and other people and the following uh, uh, scholars of the Frankfurt School. But also Friedrich Pollock and the study on uh, capitalism, Leo Loventhal, Eric Fromm and psychoanalysis. So it was you know, very broad movement of uh, big intellectuals that uh, gave a massive contribution uh, to the foundation of, uh, of the school in terms of uh, interest. Then the second generation from the 70s uh, onwards is the one which uh, uh, I see as uh, centered on uh, uh, Jürgen Habermas, who really was... Uh, um, uh, the philosopher who, uh, in a way, dominated uh, and, uh, you know, for a very long phase, the uh, topics and the methodologies of, uh, adopted by the Frankfurt School, which uh, changed quite, uh, quite deeply, I would say. Uh, and also the, um, the philosophical orientation, philosophical slash political orientation of the school also changed and moved much more towards uh, uh, political liberalism and methodologically uh, with uh, towards the integration between so-called continental philosophy with uh, Anglo-Saxon analytical uh, philo American and in British uh, analytical philosophy. So that move uh, happened because of Habermas. And indeed, the results of, uh, of that uh, choice is what we have nowadays in terms of uh, um, the third generation of the Frankfurt School, where uh, you do find certainly very prominent German scholars that um, are uh, uh, either more or less uh, integrated into the analytic framework. But also uh, you have more broadly European scholars that are part of the critical theory uh, uh, framework and Americans, uh, mainly American US scholars spread uh, in different uh, American universities. 
that uh, share, uh, you know, the critical methodologies and uh, and uh, topics. And uh, to give you some names uh, in Germany, and that's why I was, uh, you know, warning you <laughs> uh, with regard to the uh, time frame that I, I that was, uh, you know, included in my classification. You have people. Uh, from Klaus Hof uh, and Josef Fruchtel, uh, Hauke Brunkhorst, uh, uh, and other people in Germany uh, that belong uh, uh, to the third uh, generation in my in my uh, classification, because in a way or in another, they were uh, either students or younger colleagues of um, Jürgen Habermas, but you also have much younger people like uh, Christina Lafont, who is a Spanish philosopher, but she's uh, working, teaching at the North Northwestern University, and Reiner Forst, of course, uh, who is um, the uh, leading figure, I would say, at least uh, in Germany uh, uh, for uh, critical theory, and uh, he's based in Frankfurt. And he's a much younger uh, scholar than uh, the ones that I mentioned at the bit that the ones that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, but in the United States, then um, you have a similar, um, you know, um, uh, time uh, frame. I mean, uh, like a, a generation um, uh, frame that uh, includes uh, Nancy Fraser on the one hand, Sheila Benabib, Jean Cohen, Andrew Arato, uh, Bill Scheuermann, and these people uh, came in contact uh, with uh, Jürgen Habermas either in the US or in Europe, in Frankfurt, during uh, the seminars that um, Jürgen Habermas was uh, organizing. Another important scholar who unfortunately passed away uh, recently is uh, Jim Bowman, um, who wrote his important book on uh, deliberative democracy while he was a student in Frankfurt uh, with uh, Jürgen Habermas. So that's pretty much uh, mm -hmm. the, the family that uh, Jürgen Habermas created in, in his entire career. So it's a different... Uh, it's a different structure, and that's why I think uh, we should rather nowadays speak of critical theory as a movement, mm -hmm. as a global movement, rather than the Frankfurt School as a you know, more narrow uh, German uh, school.